pastor, Pastor Tunadada, in today's message. Digesting the word of God. We're going to go through a, a, a journey today. I really pray that we have the time to do this. Um, it's called digesting the word of God. You know, write that down, digesting. You know, digesting the word of God. You know, very quickly, I'll, I'll just go into digesting. You know, when we are digesting food, what do we do? We take the food, we put it in our mouth, we chew it, amen, into our stomachs, and then, you know, stuff happens. You know, the acids, the enzymes, for you people that didn't do biology, you know. You, you know, and then it gets digested. And basically, the whole idea of digestion is that, is that from the raw food that you eat, you extract the nutrients that your body will use for energy, for power, for you to be able to do the things that you need to do. Did you get that? So that's how you digest food. Amen? So our title is Digesting the Word of God. You know, um, what is the food for our spirit? Anybody here know? Food for our spirit is the word of God. Fantastic. It's the word of God. And how do we know this? How do we know this? Because the word of God says, you know, in Matthew 4.4, 4, this is Jesus Christ talking, but he's quoting Isaiah actually, that, that, that man shall not eat, amen, bread alone, amen, but by every word that proceeds from Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So basically, the word of God is food. To just tell you this too, the things that you know, you know them through two ways. That's how you know what you know. You know them by learning about it or by experiencing it. Amen? And truly, what you experience gives you a stronger conviction. Amen? So, for me, I've read in the Bible that truly the word of God is food. But I know that when I'm troubled and I'm not settled, if I can just get a few minutes and I just read the word in a peaceful environment for some time, my spirit settles and I'm, I, and I'm back together again. Is there anybody who's, who's, who's ex experienced that? Fantastic. You know, and what you're experiencing there is that you're experiencing the fact that truly the word of God is food. Now, I'll tell you this, because this whole teaching came, from, came out of this experience. You know, we all read the Bible. Most of us read the Bible. But we're obviously getting different rates of return from what we're reading. True. You can have five children who are eating the same food, but they are growing differently. But the food is the same. So what's the issue? They're digesting it differently. Okay? Now, same thing. You know, we've got, you know, have you ever been in a, in a dream before that in your dream you can't move? Anybody? Okay. And then sometimes you can't speak. Anybody? Okay. And sometimes you can't pray. Anybody? And sometimes you can't, in fact, you're not supposed to run. There's nowhere that the Bible says, the, the only place that the Bible says flee is from temptation. If not, it says abide in me and the devil will flee from you. Did you get that? So, even in your dreams, you are not supposed to run. Because the Lord has given you authority to stand your ground and repel the enemy. Okay? What you will learn today will teach you what it is that you need to do that will give the digestion of, your, of the word of God, your spiritual digestion power to get 100% nutrients out of the word of God that you read. Amen? Very good. So let us go, go, go right now into the word of God. And let us read uh, Matthew 13, 10 to 15. As you find it, I will tell you this. Your food, when you eat your food, where do you put it? In your mouth. Therefore, your mouth is a what? A gateway to your digestive system. The food, the word of God that you, are, that you eat, how does it get into your, digest your digestive system? Through your ears and through your eyes. Did you get that? Because the word of God, you will hear it. It says faith comes by hearing over and over and over and over again the word of God. Note that down. The overs and overs. The meditation pushes it into your spirit. You have gates. Gates. Did you know that? You should be careful what you watch. 
careful what you hear. Because everything you hear and watch has access to your spirit. And there are things you will hear that it will take a long time of, of good hearing to wipe it out. It's like drinking poison. And then you've got to drink so much water to get rid of it. Amen? As we read Matthew 13, 10 to 15, you're going to realize that, that Jesus made a connection between hearing, seeing, and your heart. Do we realize one thing? When we talk about the heart in the word of God, we're speaking about the, about the spirit. We're not talking about your blood pumping heart. Are you hearing me? When the word of God says your heart, it's not your blood pumping heart. It's about your spirit. Your spirit. Amen? Your spirit man. Do you get that? Fantastic. Okay. Matthew 13, 10 to 15. And the disciples came, came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them it has not been given. For whoever, has, for whoever has, to him more will be given. And he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables. I'll stop here for a minute. The statement I made now will not make a lot of sense to many people. It says, if you have, then you have more. Then if you don't have a lot, then even what you have will be taken away. No, that doesn't sound very generous or Christ-like. Does it? Does it? Not really, but I'll, but I'll tell you this. Let us read it differently. Do you have the passages? It says, for whoever has put the word understanding right there. Okay? This is where you need to write. For whoever has understanding, to him more will be given. Okay? And he will have what? Abundance of what? Understanding. But whoever does not have understanding, even what he has will be taken away from him. I think it's quite logical. If you don't have understanding on any issue, it is logical that you will even lose the little that you have because you have none. But if you have understanding, understanding builds upon understanding. Amen? And your, and your understanding will increase. So, so, so when you read this, know that we're speaking about understanding at that point. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Okay? So here Jesus is linking seeing and hearing and understanding. Did you get that? Because he says that seeing they will not see, okay? Hearing they will not hear, and they will not understand. You know, he's talking about their capacity. There's something that can affect their understanding. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which saying, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Now, look carefully. This is where it's interesting. Jesus connected the seeing, the hearing, the understanding with what? The brain? No, not the brain. He connected it with the heart. So, obviously, there is a condition in your heart that affects your seeing and your hearing and your understanding. Did you get that? Are you, are you, I mean, because we are going somewhere with this, so I need you to, 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 to follow me. There is a connection. Jesus made that connection here. He says that, 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 that we, if your heart is dull, then you cannot see well. You cannot hear well. You cannot understand well. So what makes a dull heart? Amen? What makes it, because really, your goal is to get your heart sharp. Amen? And not be dull. Now, if you go to the parable of the sower, you know that the sower dropped the seed in different kind of grounds. And Jesus explained that actually the sower was sowing the word of God. People, have you, read, have you read your Bibles lately? That he's sowing the word of God, okay? And when you drop the seed in the ground, there is something in that ground that affects its growth. It affects how it grows. It affects the, the, the speed which it grows. It affects how much fruit you get from the seed. Same thing with the word. When the word enters your heart, I must tell you now, the destination of the word of God is your heart. The destination of the seed is the ground. So here there's a comparison between the ground and the heart. Did you get that? Are you following? Fantastic. There's something called your heart condition. Did you get that? Your heart condition. Now how do you get that? Your heart condition. 
You see, what condition must we fulfill for our hearts to manifest good hearing, seeing results, and get great understanding? You know, good spiritual digestion gives you understanding and releases power into your spirit. Amen? Good spiritual digestion. But what is good spiritual digestion? You know, that's how... You see, because really, we want to get to a point where we know what to do. And one thing we've learned to do is that whatever we do must be intentional. And it must be what? Consistent. There are two words that I want us in Shining Light to, to know. To know it diligently. It's intentional and consistent. Whatever you do for God, out of your love for God, notice that your motive is what? Love for God. Whatever you do for God, out of your love for God, you must do it what? Intentionally, which means on purpose. Daniel proposed in his heart. And you must do it consistently. You must continue to do it no matter how you feel. And these are keys that will give you great, great kingdom prosperity. Great kingdom prosperity that you will excel in Jesus' name. Father Lord, I pray that you release your spirit of excellence upon your children now in Jesus' name. Amen? So, so really, you need a strong spirit. Why do you need a strong spirit? That thing that is going to make you speak in your dreams, pursue in your dreams, catch and subdue in your dream. Call the name of Jesus. Release the power and the blood in your dreams. It's going to be your strength. And you need it. You need it. So the next, thing, the next few things that you're going to learn, you must keep it. You must write it. You must meditate on it. Because really, God has a good plan for you. Amen? So, this is, so, we're, so we're going to read Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 9. You know, keys to a good heart condition and a good spiritual digestion. These are keys. We're going to take it slowly. Today, it's a teaching. I need you to follow me carefully. Okay, Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 9. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Boom. Who is speaking? This is God speaking. And this is what God is saying. He just tells you what to do. And this thing that you're doing, where are you doing it? He says, you shall love. Where do you love? In your heart. So basically, God is saying, do this to your heart. Amen? So it says, you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Do this, he says. Okay, then the next thing he says, and these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. He tells you two things. Do this to your heart, put my word in it. I'm sure you read this passage over and over and over. See it differently. Today the Lord is giving you a revelation, a powerful one, to know how to live your life intentionally, that will produce for you in a way that will exceed your expectation. God tells you one thing. He says, do this to your heart. Amen? F just follow me carefully. He says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, your mind. Amen? And all your strength. Then he steps back and says, put my word in it. Okay? And then he goes further and says, and these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Okay? You shall teach them diligently to your children. How do you teach? You speak words. You show. Amen? Now, he's linking it back to the gates to your spirit. Do you get that? That even with your children, feed them with the word. Put it in their face. Put it in their ears. Amen? Do you just get that? So he's told you what to do. He's told you what to put in it. He tells you, then he takes you farther. And talk. Each time, see, look at these words. Each, the, each single thing he says is relating to your ears and your eyes. He is gunning directly for your spirit. Did you hear that? God is feeding, you know, he is directing everything directly into your spirit. So he says, teach your children. That speak here, he's feeding, you know, them diligently to your children and, and shall talk. Amen? He says talk. Very important. Which means, you know, feed them again. Or, you know, you know talk. And then when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, basically he's saying, feed on my word all that time. It is the key to having your spirit strong. Feed on God's word all the time. You know, and what he's saying here is that the word of God should be on your iPad. It should be on your Facebook page. It should be on your, 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 your screen, on your computer. It should be on everything that you do. That's what he's saying here. He wants the word of God. It should, it should be in audio. It should be in text. It should be in all sorts of forms all around you. That is what the Lord is saying. You know, and, and he's saying this because he wants to prosper you. That is what will give you the strength. And, and very soon, you will see exactly where he is going. Okay? You shall bind them as a sign. Now, what do you do with a sign? 
you see a sign. Amen? And when you see, what are you doing? You're feeding your spirit. Okay? As a sign. And on your hand. And as frontlets. Now, a frontlet is a piece of, of uh, like a cardboard or, or leather that you put in the eyes of a horse that you're riding so it would, its eyes will not stray. So, so when you point it this way, all it can see is that way. So it's actually something that's in the eyes of the horse. Amen? Those are frontlets. So this thing says that as frontlets. So basically, he wants the word of God in your face all that time. And you are able to do this. This is not hard to do. It's not too great a price to pay for the strength of your spirit that you need. You need a strong spirit to prosper. You need a strong spirit to overcome. And you are overcomers in Jesus' name. And you shall write them on your doorposts and on your house and on your gates. Now, when I, when I meditated on this, the revelation I got was really awesome. Your, 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 your doorpost and your gate are physical entrances into where you live. Every day you must pass your doorpost. Every day you must pass your gate. At this point in time, God is aligning your spiritual entrances with your physical entrances. Do you get that? Because he says, if you write these things on your doorpost and on your gates, as you walk through that entrance physically, you are opening your, your spiritual entrance to feed on the word of God. Because God knows that you shall go in and out of your gate and your doorpost several times daily. And he says, put it on your doorpost. Put it on your gates. He, he, he has, he's, he's asking you to align align your spiritual entrances with your physical entrances for you to really prosper and walk in the power that God wants you to walk in. And this is possible. It's not hard. It's not hard. In our day and age, it simply means that things that you do daily, you must have a way where you, in your doing it, you are seeing the word of God. You are hearing the word of God. Everybody here takes a bath every day. Amen? Have your Bible on audio. Play it. It's a doorway. So it's something that you do all the time. So, 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 so each time you enter the bath, let it be part of your, your, your routine. You just put, bam, you, you put your phone on and you, you know, and you take a bath. You've listened to 30 minutes, if you're like some people, or like some people, two hours. Because I know some people do two hours in the bathroom, most likely. People, am I talking to anybody? You know? But, but are you getting my point? So, so, so God wants you to align your spiritual entrances with your physical entrances. Amen? Am I going too deep? No? Nope? Very good. So, we know one thing. God says, love me with all your heart. All your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Amen? And that's good. And all, and all of us will say, yes, Lord, we've done that. And that's great. But then the Lord says, if you love me, you will obey me. What level is your obedience today? Because action speaks louder than words. Is there anything that you know to do that, that you just, like, you know what, I know to do it, but you know what, I'm not really ready to, to just do it now. You know, I'll do it tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. Are you playing? Are you compromising your, your obedience? Because your obedience directly indicates the love that you have for God. So if you're at a point where you're saying, yes, Lord, I love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. Where's your obedience today? Do you get my point? So, 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 so we need to start to work on it. It is God's will that we walk in power. Because we're going to read the word of God, and tell you the kind of life God has prepared for you and I. That if only we will say, you know what, Lord, I am holding nothing back. I give it all to you. Amen? And, 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 and you know, I can stand and say, Lord, I, I, I don't know of any known disobedience. Show me how you see me. Because I know I'm not perfect. Do you get my point? So, so, so start to think, you know, is, are there, is there any area of your life that you're still holding back? You know, God wants your heart. He wants your heart. He wants all of it. He doesn't want you to hold anything back. He's your God. He's your creator. Amen? You know, and, and this word is a blessing to you. I want you to receive it. Amen? You know, because, 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 because if you read Deuteronomy 6, 10 to 11, it says, So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build. He told you, what to do with your heart and your life. He told you what to put in your heart. Now he's saying, if you do this, this is what I will do. Cities that you did not build. What is he talking about? Favor. If you are able to receive from God, cities. He did not say one city. He did not say one house. 
He said, cities that you did not build. It only indicates one thing. Great favor that exceeds your expectation. Is it not worth it to give him all your life? All your heart? All your mind? Just love him. Is it too much to ask? Is it too high a price to pay? No, it is not. It is not because you will have success and victory in this world. And then you will go to the next, the everlasting. And then have more victory and joy and prosperity in heaven forever. Where is the downside? Where is the downside? Except we are deceived. There is no downside to this deal. So if you are, if, if, if this word has come to you today, and it has come to you today, I need you to receive it. That love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. When you do this and you put the word of God in there, you will have power. Your digestive system will be 100%. The word of God says some had 30, some had 60, some had a, a, a hundredfold. It's about the level of your obedience. If your obedience is where it is, you will reap a hundred all the time. Am I speaking to anybody today? Am I speaking? See, 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 all you need to do today is just intentional, intentionally propose in your heart that, Lord, I am going to give it to you. And your actions will start to show. Your actions will start to show. What is it that you have placed above the Lord? It could be anything. It could be your job. It could be your husband. It could be your wife. It could be, it could be food. It could be sleep. If truly you love your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, you cannot be in your comfort zone. It's impossible. It is impossible to love the God with everything, to, to, to just love God with everything and still be in your comfort zone. You can't. You must be at a point where you are comfortable out of your comfort. So actually, the God, when God says do not live and serve other gods, the other gods could be your comfort. In fact, for a lot of us, I think that is it. Comfort. Who is willing to lose their comfort today? For God. Just completely just let it go. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. And God is faithful. You see, God is not wicked. When he told Abraham, kill your son, you'll have thought, wow, this is a wicked God. But he wanted to see. He wanted to see. I can tell you now, there's no how that you will leave your comfort zone for God that you will not get greater success and greater comfort. Did you get that? Seriously. He said, if you will lose your life, you will get it back. Amen? And if you try to hold on to your life, you will do what? You will lose it. He's not talking about physical death, but, but if you're trying to hold on to your old life, you will lose it. But if you give up your whole life for Jesus... You will get a new life and a better life in Jesus' name. Amen? Good. So we were at uh, cities. You know, houses full of good things. See, God is so awesome. He says, say, he says that, that, that I will give you large and large. He says large. So not just any kind of city. You know, not some ugly, skinny, you know, shanty town. If you get my point. He says, I shall give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build. People love that part. Houses full of good things. So it doesn't say houses with some good things. It says houses full. Houses full of all good things. No, it, I mean, like, do you get the language there? Full, all good things, which you did not feel favor. Hewn out wells, which means, you know, just flow of, 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 of riches, which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees, which is companies and investments, which you did not plant. Is this not an awesome God? Awesome God. So, 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 so we've established that. That's what God wants to do for you. But then God gives a warning. He gives a warning. As you read 12, 18, uh, 12 to 18, it says, When you have eaten and are full, listen to me here, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. God is taking you somewhere good. You may be there already. But he says, don't forget, you came from somewhere. And I am the one. Him, God, is the one who has brought you here. So do not forget that I brought you here. Amen? That God brought you there. Who, who here is, is enjoying anything and you think maybe it didn't come from God? You think, well, you know, I'm really hardworking and my hard work has yielded this fruit. Anybody? Okay, who here knows that God is the supplier of all good things? Fantastic. I'm speaking to the right people. God bless you all. Good. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him. Now, fear of the Lord. God does not want you terrified of him. Did you know that? 
He does not want you terrified. He wants you to be afraid of getting disconnected from him. Listen carefully again. God does not... See, my father's enemy are terrified of him because my father is an awesome man of battle. Amen? But me, his son, my fear of him is that I be, not connect, be, be disconnected from him. Because as long as I'm connected with him, I have provision, I have protection, I have support, I have guidance, I have coverage, I have so many things. Amen? So I cannot even start to think that I could be ever disconnected with him. So the fear of God is the fear of being disconnected from this your God. Amen? So when you hear the fear of God in the Bible, do not think that God wants you terrified. He does not want you terrified. Praise the Lord. Very good. He says, you shall fear the Lord your God and serve him. And I'm sure we're all doing that. And shall take oaths in his name. You shall not go after other gods. The gods of the peoples who are all around you. What are other gods? Another god does not need to be some ugly statue with nails in it that they've put chicken blood on. I don't know how I know this, but I seem to know. You know? Amen? Does not, does not need to be a god. Anything that you place in value above God has become a God to you. Where when that thing speaks on this side and God speaks on this side, you shall go to that side because you have elevated it in your mind, only in your mind. Because the reality is that this God is the greatest God of all. Did you get that? So whatever it is, that it could be anything, anything, you know, and, 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 and most times, you know, it hurts me when I see people, they've got to make a decision. Either this thing will suffer or God's work will suffer. And many times, the decision is that God's work can suffer. Let me take, off, you know, take care of the other. It is wrong thinking. But when you honor God and say, you know what, God, it may look like I'm going to make a loss. But I'm standing on your word and I believe I'm doing this for you. God will come through for you in a mighty way. Seriously, I mean, I have been there over and over again. When, 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 when you deprive yourself of something, you know, it seems like you've, 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 you have actually deprived. You will get more. You will get, God wants to know. Abraham didn't have to kill Isaac. It looked like he would kill Isaac. But guess what? God provided. And God will provide. Have faith. Trust him. Anybody with me tonight? I brought this, this morning. Yeah, please trust him. Trust him. Stand with God. Stand with God. Amen? Praise the Lord. You know, he says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God. Basically, that just shows that you love him. His testimonies, his statutes, that's the word of God that we know today. You shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, that, it may, that you may go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Do you just get that? God has, 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 has promised a lot to you and he will make it happen in jesus name amen a heart in good condition digests the word and produces understanding did you get that when your heart is in good condition you have loved the lord thy god with all your heart all your mind all your soul you that is a heart that is digesting the word of god when the word of god when what god's word comes to you you will get every every iota of energy that's in it you will find that your spirit will be strong. Truly, I want us to go on this journey. Start to live your life intentionally. That I will love God with all my heart and all my soul. Amen? And that, that, that doing this with this heart condition, put the word of God in your spirit and see how your spirit will grow. See the victories that... You see, And let me tell you, see, spiritual victory will always come before physical victory. The spirit comes before the physical. What you do not see comes before what you see. You know, there's no time to get into it. But too many times, God did it in the spirit and told his children. You know, it's like, it's like, see with your inner eye. I have done it. Go, make it happen in the physical. And it shall be so with you in the name of Jesus. That, the, that what God has done for you, he will give you revelation to see it. And he will give you wisdom to do it. So you will just go. So when you are going, you are not creating something new. You are simply manifesting in the physical what God has already completed. Completed. In the spiritual. And I want to tell you this too. Because I know I'm speaking to somebody here. You think you are waiting on God. But you are wrong. I tell you this morning with, with confidence. That you are not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. 
Do you get that? Jesus said, it is finished. He said, I am, you know, I, I am a, a, about to finish my father's work. On the cross, he said, it is finished. God's work on your life is complete. God has seen you from now till whenever. He has seen it. He has done it. He has provided. He has made a way. Amen? So, you must realize this. If you think you are waiting on God, you will be deceived by the enemy to, to sit still and do nothing. And if you do nothing, nothing happens. It's logical. You are waiting on God, so you are doing nothing. It, like, because you believe that in the passage of time, something will happen. The passage of time does not, does not confirm or make things happen in your life. Time will just pass. And then you'll be old. You know, I mean, it, it seems obvious, but, but sometimes we need to hear it. So you need to do something. You need to do something. You need to pray for revelation. Your vision for your life is not a new one, so don't labor over it. God has already done it. Pray for revelation of his plan for your life. Can you imagine what life would be if God's plan was here and your vision is here and every day you're praying to God to take you there when he wants you here? Does this sound like fun? I don't think so. Amen? So truly, pray. It's easy. Pray. Get to your knees, close your eyes. Pray. God, give me a revelation. And many things, I'll tell you this, many things that you discount as a thought was actually God speaking. Listen to me carefully. God is speaking to you already. There are many things that in your head just say, you know, I had a thought. And because the devil lets you think it's a thought, you're able to discard it and not obey. Let me tell you this. The devil, his job description is extremely narrow. Very narrow. The Bible says he came to kill, steal, destroy. So that thought that says, talk to that man. He may help you. I don't think it's the devil. That thought that says, help that person. I don't think it could be the devil. Because the devil could never tell you to help anybody. It's not in his scope. You know, there are some basic things that you must learn. That as you live this life, live your life in love. If you don't know what to do, act in love, self-sacrificially. And you will have done the right thing. Every step you take in love takes you towards God. And every step you take out of love takes you away. Whatever it is, whether you yap your wife, you beat your, you do anything bad, you are walking a way out of your path of destiny. You must learn that. That when you walk in love, you are walking in the right path. You may not even know where you're going, but it is, it is the right path. But once you walk out of love, selfishly, you have deviated. Amen? Praise the Lord. So truly, as I conclude, as I must, you know, uh, I want you to just realize that truly you have, you have a say in where your life goes. You have a say in the strength and power that your spirit exhibits. Amen? You have a say. You have control. So today, I want us to just say, I am intentionally, in fact, repeat after me, I am intentionally going to love God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, help me. Help me to do this. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you for your word that has come forth this morning. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, that you help us. Help us to, to have our hearts yielded. Yielded to receive your word. Just yielded to receive your word that truly that the purpose of this word may be manifested in our lives. And that purpose is that our spirits may grow strong, strong, strong. That at every interaction with the enemy, we shall have victory in Jesus' name. That at every encounter with the enemy, we shall have victory in Jesus' name. That in all situations in our lives, we shall have victory over the enemy in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you, that you feed us, that you give us every opportunity to feed to feed strong on your word in the name of Jesus. And we pray in the name of Jesus that everything that the word has for us, that we shall receive it, receive it in Jesus' name. Father Lord, we pray for wisdom, we pray for understanding, we pray for knowledge, we pray for revelation of your word and your will in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, in your name, we pray that indeed, oh Lord, that you bless us with the spirit of obedience that is complete. Let our obedience not be partial. Let it be complete in Jesus' name. Let our obedience be prompt. Let it not be delayed. Father Lord, we shall not give delayed obedience. We shall obey 
immediately and promptly in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you and we praise your holy name. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we have prayed.